The World Bank Group, as you know, is one of the major financiers of, uh, of uh, energy infrastructure around the world, and we have developed uh, a number of, uh, of products. So there are essentially three institutions which actually involve, are involved in this area. One is the, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which works with government and offers all sorts of instruments, uh, primarily debt financing. Then we have the IFC, which works with the private sector and uh, which offers a combination of equity and, um, and, and debt. And we have the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, the MIGA, which offers uh, all sorts of guarantees, ranging from political guarantees to, to other, other types of, uh, of risk guarantees. So the World Bank is involved in Romania uh, in a number of projects, not as many as we could have maybe, but uh, I think our main role here and in general in a number of countries is actually to support governments improve the regulatory environment for, for the energy sector. And I would like to say that uh, I fully concur with the statements of some of the previous, uh, of the previous uh, speakers saying that uh, I don't think we have a shortage of, of money when it comes to actually financing uh, energy projects, but I think it's, it's rather a shortage of, of, quality, of, of quality projects, projects that uh, get their economics and financing uh, uh, right. And I think this, uh, this, this happens for, for a number of reasons. Uh, I think it happens uh, because the policy agenda at national level or sometimes at supranational level, if you talk about the, the European Union, it's, it's, it's often unpredictable and often uh, focus on the, on the short run. So if we had a, a clear strategy aiming for the long run, for, for the development of, of the energy sector in a particular country, I think it would be much easier for uh, uh, for uh, investors to identify and finance privately uh, uh, do, those projects. Um, now we've seen many, many policy changes uh, at national level and in Europe, in Europe most of the um, thinking, the, the policy agenda is, is driven by, by the national government. There are some, some, I would say, early steps to, to move towards an European-wide strategy when it comes to to energy, but I think uh, we are far away from getting, uh, reaching uh, a, a situation which is, uh, which is, which is uh, favorable. Another dimension actually which, which, uh, which enhances uncertainty is the major transformation that we have seen occurring in the, in the energy sector worldwide in the last few years. So who, the, who would have thought, for example, five years ago that uh, that the United States would, would become probably a net exporter of, of energy in a few years. So they consume now uh, about 90% uh, about of their, their energy consumption comes from domestic sources now, which has never been seen uh, since the period of President Reagan. We see all the other tremendous changes, like, uh, like the major improvements in energy efficiency in, in China. So China is converging very fast in terms of energy efficiency towards the level seen in the United States and the European Union. And actually I've seen a recent uh, paper uh, saying that, for example, their CO2 emissions will actually peak probably around 2025. And everybody was thinking a few years ago that this would be a much longer, much longer term. We've seen a significant penetration of, of the renewables and actually we see an acceleration of, of investment uh, in renewables. Solar, for example, this year, I think would be, we are, where people estimate uh, uh, installations of around 57 gigawatts, uh, which, is, which is very large, but this would actually accelerate, and maybe by 2020, I saw predictions saying that 100, over 135 gigawatts of, of, uh, of uh, solar would, would be installed uh, Worldwide, and this has major implications of prices, government prices, because as we know, intermittent energies they, they have a zero mar near zero marginal cost. So obviously, I think they they they, they um, influence the, the the price dynamics and price volatility. And you can see it even in Romania when the wind blows, you when the sun shines, uh, you see major major adjustments in, in in prices. And Romania has become because of that and other causes uh, a net electricity exporter, for example. Uh, in, in the last uh, in the last few years, um, 
we we've seen we've seen increased efforts to to actually uh, develop storage capacity because of these intermittents. I'm not talking only about hydro here, and I think Ovidu is gonna gonna talk about a project which is very dear to us, but which is moving very slowly, right? So, but we see other other types of uh, of storage uh, being uh, prospected, and costs come down pretty rapidly. Of course, we are not at the stage where where these these uh, energies should are capable of competing by themselves uh, uh, with uh, established fuels, but I think we are, we are quickly heading in, in, this, in that direction. Just to conclude, I would say that in, in Romania, I think that Romania is, we've seen tremendous changes in the, in the energy sector in the, in the last few years. So uh, Romania is well positioned, for example, to, in, in my view, to withstand uh, eventual shocks uh, because of the nature of the energy sector there. Our, our dependence, Romania's dependence is the third lowest in, uh, in the European Union. So I think only 18% of our energy comes from external sources. As I said earlier, we are a net exporter of uh, electricity. We'll probably do that for a while. We've recently coupled our electricity market with Hungary with, uh, with, with Slovakia and with the Czech Republic, and I think we're already seeing convergence in, in prices there. So prices become exogenous, which I think it's a very strong signal, and I think has very important implications for the further transformation of the generation side of the energy sector in Romania. There are still some producers which high marginal costs, I think, which will have a tremendous uh, challenge in surviving uh, in the new competitive, in the market which will become more and more competitive. We, we have seen improvements in the, in the functioning of the, of the energy companies. We've seen uh, gradual brought, uh, bringing in uh, of, of professional management and uh, you can see that the performance of most of these companies uh, has improved in some cases uh, uh, dramatically. I think more is needed in this direction. The government is working to further improve the, the corporate government's agenda for the, for, the, for the SOE sector, including for the energy sector, and I think more and more uh, we'll see improvements there, because I think the energy sector in Romania could become one of the drivers of, uh, of growth. Uh, coming to the interconnections, obviously I think we've seen this, uh, this important step in uh, in coupling the electricity markets. We need to do that probably also for the gas markets more and more. And I think opening up to the European markets would put Romania in a very favorable uh, uh, position. And of course, here is the, is the, is the storage dimension that uh, comes in because with this increased volatility of prices, I think there is more and more talk about the need to, to build storage facilities. I've seen that uh, an estimate, if I'm not mistaken, of the international uh, energy agencies saying that you probably would need at some point 200 megawatts of, of storage. I think we're far away to, from, from that capacity. Thank you very much.